This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, your host, Spencer Linton and Jason Shepard. BYU Sports Nation is live once again from Studio B, your day-to-day play-by-play presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Thursday, March 24th, wherever and however you're connected Hope you're having a fantastic day. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside a man who 50 years ago today watched The Godfather debut in theaters, Jason Shepard. That is not accurate. Uh, I am not 50 years old. Uh, (laughs) 50 years ago, that movie came out. And honestly, for something that's that old, it is held up so well. It truly is. If I'm a big fan of the Rewatchables podcast. Uh It's obviously one of the ones that gets mentioned a lot in terms of Rewatchable. If it's on, I know that, well, my next three hours are taken care of. It has withstood the test of time. And and here's the thing, and this may be blasphemous for some, a lot of the acting in that movie is quite bad. (laughs) But it doesn't seem to matter. It's so great. Is the acting bad, or have we just changed the way we like to perceive actors and Maybe. actresses? It's, I think it's somewhat, it's the overacting somewhat, I think, is what I'm talking about. But it doesn't, it doesn't change the greatness of the movie. There are some performances that sometimes I cringe as I still watch. But, man, that movie is great. So good. Jason Shepard breaking down The Godfather on BYU Sports Nation. <laughs> the horse head is just the end-all, be-all. Look. When uh, when someone puts a horse head in your bed, <laughs> you know things have gone south. Terribly wrong. South fast. You're, you're dealing with the wrong crowd. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you might need to find some new friends. Here's your show lineup. We promise not to uh, leave anything <laughs> decapitated. <laughs> oh, jeez. This show is just completely falling off the rails and we're two minutes in. <laughs> Season review for BYU men's basketball on tap. How are you going to remember this specific season, how will you define it? What it will, uh, what will it be most remembered for? Greg Revell, the voice of the Cougars, is going to join us to discuss the details of that. Plus, a special treat for you to preview the alumni game on March 31st, live on the BYU TV app. Quarterback Max Hall is back on the program. Why he's ready to deliver the goods for whichever team he's playing for. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. All right, let's get to it. The men's hoop season comes to a close after last night's NIT loss to Washington State, 77-58. The loss also brought the BYU careers of Alex Barcelo and Tijon Lucas to an end. Freshman Fusene Traore passed Yoli Childs, who was in attendance, by the way, last night, setting a new freshman rebounding record with 279 boards. The Cougars now officially have one more season before joining the Big 12. Well, the challenge has been issued. BYU needs to recruit to compete with a team like Washington State if they want to make that transition into the Big 12. BYU baseball faces off against a very good and 19th ranked Gonzaga baseball team opening up a critical three-game series at Miller Park. BYU beat Utah Valley 12-5 earlier this week. Game, 8 Eastern, 6 Mountain, live on BYU TV. You can listen on BYU Radio as well. Track and field is at the Clyde Littlefield Texas Relays today in Austin. Senior Hallie Folsom Walker still competing in the heptathlon and as of this morning, is in 14th place with 3191 points. Also, Dallin Vorkink holds a 13th place position in the decathlon after right. the first five events. Good luck to both of them. BYU men's golf in Stanford, California. Yes, Stanford, California is its own city. Playing at the Goodwin. The Cougars tee off at, uh, well, they teed off about an hour ago and will continue in that tournament over the next three days. Real big, significant challenge for Todd Miller, Bruce Brockbank, and their guys on BYU Men's Golf. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending presented by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. Learn more at bodyguards.com. BYU basketball, as Jason just mentioned, wrapping up their season 24 wins, 11 losses. But 
They sputter out in the NIT quarterfinals at home against Washington State. It's the other Cougars from up on the Palouse that are headed to Madison Square Garden and not BYU. So, Jason, as we take a step back from this season and look at all 35 games, the ups and downs, the injuries, the adversity, what will this BYU season be remembered for? There are two things to me that stand out, and actually one leads into the other. The first is what could have been, and I'm obviously referring to the injuries to the big men. You know, you lose Richard Harward early in the season. You also lose Gavin Baxter to the injury at Utah Valley. And so really, at the very beginning of the season, the way that you thought you were going to play, the rotations that you thought you were going to be able to have, are completely thrown out the window because you have to regroup on the fly. And that is one of those situations where BYU, I thought, did a fantastic job of doing just that, adjusting on the fly. And they picked up some very big wins and put this team in a position to be an NCAA tournament team. Unfortunately, as the season progressed, some of those issues became a little bit too difficult to overcome and as the season went on it it became a bigger issue so that's what I will remember it for was what could have been if BYU had its mix of players that it expected to have but the byproduct of that is that we discovered Fusene Traore at a much greater level than we expected to we knew he was going to get time but I don't think any of us felt or knew that he had this type of of game in him this early. He was an absolute revelation this year in terms of what he can do around the rim, not just offensively, but rebounding, his physical presence. That Those are the two things that stand out to me about this year. Sure, his defensive length. As yes. we look at another block shot on BYU TV, Foose was, as we joked, was on the accelerator clause yeah. for BYU basketball. For better or worse, because by necessity, they needed him to step up and take on a larger role. But... Man, looking at the graphics we just threw up onto the screen. BYU, remember when they were 6-0 and and ranked number 12 in the country? They had just throttled Oregon at the home of the Trailblazers in Portland, so a de facto road game. They're the 12th-ranked team in the country. Then Gavin Baxter goes out. I, I feel like we're not putting enough emphasis on just how incredibly impactful that injury is was and it's to the credit of the BYU coaching staff and the players around Gavin Baxter after he got injured that BYU still competed and won a bunch of games yes very much so because the expectations kind of just like remained high right oh BYU's number 12 in the country well if they lose Baxter like that's okay they're still pacing to be like a six or a seven seed in the NCAA tournament and it just caught up with BYU teams figured out how to beat BYU when the Cougars were significantly undersized. Also keep in mind, Richard Harwood didn't play one regular season game. He didn't finish one regular season game. So even if BYU has one of those guys, either Richard Harwood or Gavin Baxter, things are significantly different. BYU's in the NCAA tournament. I think it's that big of a difference because now when those two guys go out, you are asking Caleb Lohner to develop into a role he is not comfortable playing. His entire basketball career he was a face-up player meaning he would stare you in the eyes with the ball and try and take you out the dribble he was kind of a hybrid four all of a sudden Caleb's going to start playing the five and Foose's got to play the five and those guys are kind of rotating in the post and now the guards are trying to figure out okay well if we don't have Richard and Gavin and we got to take on a bigger role so now T. John Lucas and Alex Barcelo already feel pressure and now they're feeling a lot of pressure to try and keep competing at this high level so to me the the word is adaptation that's how I will remember this season because BYU had to adapt in so many ways and it just caught up with them. I told you earlier this week, speaking to all of you listening on BYU Sports Nation, that Washington State is not a good matchup for BYU. They're just like San Francisco. Super tall, big, long, athletic, and they've got guards that can just hit tough shots like Jamari Bouye well, so, and Shabazz. Well, and Flowers last night. Michael was, Flowers. Yeah, Flowers last night was Tell me he great. doesn't remind you of Jamari Bouye and Khalil Shabazz, the way that they can create their own shot out the dribble, and they just, hands in their face, they just make shots. Yep. Okay? Tough matchup for BYU. I know people, and I had people coming at me on Twitter yesterday saying, they didn't get to the tournament, season's a failure. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. I know your expectations remained high, 
I will remember this season as one of adaptation and in many ways overcoming adversity and overachieving. The fact that BYU was still a tournament team halfway through the West Coast Conference season with no bigs was an overachievement. What BYU did with all of the personnel issues that they dealt with right out of the gate is remarkable. BYU put itself in as right on the bubble. Now, it, it started to slip a little bit after the West Coast Conference tournament and start, you had other teams. And they started falling down the, the list a little bit. But like you said, BYU was, was in contention for the NCAA tournament. Now, it didn't work out. But the fact that they played the entire season without a true big, I'm not even sure what that means anymore, a bit, but with significant height, to, to, Somebody to, over six, eight. to combat what other teams had on their roster, the fact that they were able to get this many wins and have this much success this year is very remarkable. And yes, it didn't end the way that they wanted, no, it's that fans wanted. It's disappointing. But there are circumstances that BYU, at the end of the day, just couldn't ultimately overcome in order to reach its goal. And that's understandable when you talk about the guys that they did not have this year. Yeah, we're not being naive. The season was disappointing because of what BYU accomplished early on. Like, you saw what it could be potentially. And then it's kind of like, hang on for dear life. Right. And, oh, man, BYU was still kind of on the bubble going into Selection Sunday. That two-week stretch that started at Santa Clara Brutal. is what ultimately – was the undoing. Cost BYU yes. the chance to go to the NCAA yes. tournament. Yeah, no, no naivete here. Disappointing season for sure. But when you consider what Mark Pope and his staff had to do with the pieces they had in place after seven games into the season, frankly, they overachieved for a while, and then it just caught up with them. So it's hard for me to sit here and say, 24 and 11, good grief, get out of here. I remember 1 and 25. I remember 9 and 21 in 1997 and feeling good about BYU just making their conference tournament. Okay, I remember that. I remember what Steve Cleveland's last year, 9 and 21, when Dave Rose took over. I know the standards have changed, but you have to alter your expectations when you lose significant pieces like that. And I had other people saying, everybody deals with injuries. How come BYU couldn't handle it? I am not kidding you, Jason. I went through 50 of the 68 NCAA tournament teams and just, like, looked at their kind of game-by-game process, like, which starters were in? This took me, like, a few hours, okay? <laughs> which, like, who had significant injuries to yes. projected starters? I could not find one team of the 50 that I went through, and there were 68. I got tired. I was like, I'm over this. Oh. But 50 so teams. you got lazy is what you're saying. Could not find one team that lost two Biggs. I will never forget Two. this quote from Coach Pope. And I believe, I don't think it was after the UVU loss. I actually think it was the next game in Springfield against Missouri State. I remember him saying these words. We realized we were never going to be the, the team that we thought we were going to be. We are never going to see because of the players they didn't have. Exactly. They went in with an idea of what was possible and what they could do with the personnel that they have. And when these injuries happened, at the same spot, down low, he says, we're never going to be the team that we thought we were going to be. Now, that doesn't mean he thought we can't win. He just says, we're going to have to do it a different way. So they had to do every bit of this, game after game after game, on the fly. Yes. Mix and match to find out what worked. And they picked up a lot of wins Along the way, they just ran out of gas. Yeah, well, I love the, the argument. How come Coach Pope can't find a consistent starting lineup? Oh, I don't know. Why don't you uh, lose your two starting center seven games in and then try and figure right. out a consistent starting five? Yeah. Like, it, the challenge that they dealt with personnel-wise was too much. It was too much to overcome in the end. I know getting to Madison Square Garden would have been a nice kind of redemption moment, like – kind of sal salvaging some disappointment from not getting into the big dance. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. But I'm not going to sit here and say, hey, 24 wins is a, is a failure. Like, that's, that's, ri ridiculous. that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. No. They you can be upset with the way that it ended. 
You can certainly be upset that be they mad. lost last night. Sure. And sure. they are. The team is they, they're upset that they didn't win last night. And devastated that they're not going to New York. But to call this return. season a failure no. is beyond Stop ridiculous. It. Stop it. 50 teams I looked at. Not one of those teams that went to the tournament lost both of their bigs. Not a shocker. When you're healthy, you win a bunch of yep. games. It's true. All I know is this, Jason. We can now flip the page officially to the football season in how many days? Countdown. To the Bulls. 163. 163 days away. BYU at the home of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the USF Bulls. Raymond F. James Stadium. It's uh, 23-ish weeks away. This will be your second time there, right? So, yeah, second time. Second time. Hanging out with Tom Brady. God, amazingly, he'll still be He'll still be. Well, at least we think so. We'll see what happens. (laughs) Our question of of the day. How will you remember this BYU basketball season? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Dan Lisa Aiga says, Fusini Traore having an amazing freshman year. Barcelo draining threes. Loner's aggressive defense and rebounds. Atiki's blocks. A lot of fun nights watching games in the Marriott Center with some hard losses. Hashtag BYUSN. That is a very healthy way to look at the season. A lot of fun. A lot of fun games. And, yeah, some very difficult losses. Yeah, no question. last night. Hashtag BYUSN Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram if you want to join that conversation. All right, coming up, where does Tyler Algier land on our guy Cam Meller's big board? We'll tell you. And I told this man the very thing last night that I'm about to say. Can't think of a better person to help us recap the BYU basketball season than the voice of the Cougars. Greg Rubel, how will he remember the 2021-2022 BYU basketball season? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. blanket getting cozy with family and friends a gift for everyone minky couture official luxury blanket of byu athletics andy is new this season yeah she's awesome very capable and very big-hearted it's so amazing to be a part of this i mean to travel around the world and learn so much from others while we can participate in their goals in meaningful ways yeah we like to tease her you know it's natural though being the new girl and all Yeah, she hit the ground running. Yeah, she did. I hope the show can inspire others to get involved and open their eyes to the people around them. Yeah, she looks small, but she's super tough. Doesn't like snakes, though. Yeah, that's for sure. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join us tomorrow on BYU Sports Nation for BYU Pro Day coverage. Join Spencer and me here in Studio B. And then Dave McCann will be live at the IPF with interviews and reactions. Tyler Algier and four other Cougars work to impress NFL scouts. Tune in tomorrow at 12 Eastern here on BYU TV, BYU Radio, and the app. We are live in Studio B. This is your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I'm Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside Jason Shepard. As promised, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, joins us in Studio B as we now look back 
on a very up and down, interesting, injury riddled BYU basketball season that ultimately ended still with 24 wins. Greg, let's start with the last game last night. Uh, and you told us earlier this week, Washington State's really good. They're like San Francisco. Remind you a lot of them. And ultimately, that was too much for the Cougars to handle. What are your thoughts on the loss last night? And ultimately, what was the undoing of BYU against the other Cougars? Well, let's talk about the last three games, the NIT games. They faced a regular season conference champ in the first game, a regular season conference champ in the second game, and a top five Pac-12 team that is now healthy and playing its best basketball of the year. Washington State has a better Ken Palm ranking than three Sweet 16 teams right now. <laughs> okay? So better than Iowa State, better than Miami, and better than St. Peter's, but St. Peter's is a Cinderella. We don't, they, they, you, know, you don't really want to compare. But the two that are kind of in their mix, they're ahead of Miami and Iowa State. They're one spot behind Providence, another Sweet 16 team. This was a good and is a good Washington State team playing its best basketball because they are healthy. And, and I thought that last night's game is fascinating in that it's kind of a microcosm of the objectives BYU wants to achieve in transitioning to the Big 12. You know, what does the Big 12 have? Length, physicality. What did Washington State have last night? Length, physicality, 6'10", 6'11", 6'10", off the bench. All right. Uh, aggressive downhill guards, check, check. Washington State had that uh, going. Uh, depth, Washington State, Kyle Smith didn't like what he saw early. From, he went to the bench early last night and got responses from those bench players. So... Their top eight players, five starters, three bench. Their three bench guys gave them 10 field goals. BYU's top three, BYU's three bench guys gave them zero field goals. The depth was a factor last night. Uh, Washington State had it, and BYU didn't last night. So, you know, those are kind of three, you know, factors that BYU will want to address and objectives they want to achieve, transitioning to the Big 12, want to get longer. And BYU was a longer team at the start of the year. Let's not forget, they lost two size, two, two pretty important pieces of the puzzle with length. You want to get longer, want to get deeper. You, you want to get that aggressive downhill guard play. Um, and, and we saw that last night from from WSU and uh, yeah they were going to be good and they were good it was interesting about last night guys is that BYU kind of neutralized Washington State inside in some ways the ways were uh, you know inside scoring was was dead even uh, between the two teams second chance points even uh, free throw attempts even offensive rebounds even rebounds even now, the, what, what doesn't show up there is the impact Washington State's length had inside, especially when it comes to rim protection and not letting BYU guards get downhill and finish at the rim. So there were some definite impacts by the WSU length, but in one way, BYU, or in many ways, BYU kind of neutralized it and played them to a standoff. Credit to Foose, credit to Caleb Lohner. BYU did enough good things inside. It really kind of came down to uh, both teams starting guard combos. BYU was outscored in the starting guard com combos by 20, and they lost by 19. Mm. Uh, those two guards for WSU made uh, eight threes, and BYU starting a guard combo made uh, one three, I think. They made eight or nine, BYU made one. There's kind of the difference in the game last night. It actually came down to three-point shooting. Uh, BYU made 16 threes against Northern Iowa and only three against WSU. Now, you're going to get different looks against WSU. UNI gives you a lot of three looks. There weren't as many there against Washington State. But early, there were some good looks that BYU just wasn't hitting. It might have made a change in the game. And there was some bad luck and bad, you know, some bad bounce type things when it was still a game. I think about that five point possession in the first half when BYU had a six point lead. It kind of changed the tone of the game at that point. You know, what, what, what could have been a, a travel and a turnover turned into a good basket with a three point play change chance miss of the free throw loose ball foul on the free throw miss three-pointer off the inbounds boom a five-point swing part of a seven nothing run BYU went from up six to down one pretty quickly that was kind of a weird thing that happened it kind of changed the early tone in a 19-point game you can't nitpick too much but when it was still a game I think about that I kind of rambling bottom line is BYU played a good Washington State team that kind of showcased some things BYU will want to address and need to uh, to transition into the Big 12. Let's talk about Alex Barcelo. Obviously, his BYU career came to an end last night. How would you describe his season, his career, and what he's meant to this program? Well, gosh, uh, Coach Mark Pope on the postgame show last night uh, kind of reiterated, you know, the impact uh, that will be felt, you know, kind of in the community and in Cougar Nation and as a leader off the floor uh, will have been as important as anything he did on the floor. And, and again, I think, I think one of the greatest credits you can give the guy is that he was a, a three-year player that felt like a four- or five-year guy. 
here at BYU. He kind of felt like he had that kind of impact, and um, I, I just you know will will miss him so much. What a what a what a strong leader, and 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 so much was on his shoulders uh, after you know Jake and 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 TJ and Yoli left the program. He kind of had to carry this program in a lot of ways uh, for the last couple of seasons, and. You know, I, I think, you know, by the end of it, meaning the end of last night, I don't know how much was left in the tank for A.B. He just gave it all every game, started every game uh, that, he, that he played for, uh, for, for Coach Mark Pope, just answered the bell every night and took so much punishment, was so much the focal point uh, of every team's scout, so much attention, uh, physically and otherwise. The challenge for him just had to be enormous every night. And I think he just gave it his all, and by the end of it all, I don't know how many more made shots were left in him as a college player. He just put it all out there. And I just think he exhausted himself uh, as a leader for this program. Greg Rubel, the voice of the Cougars, is on BYU Sports Station. How will you remember the entirety of this season? Or in a way, define what we just witnessed over... 35 games. Yeah, I mean, they played 35 and 124. And, and with the injuries early and the injuries late and using 10 different starting lineups uh, and, and yet, you know, beating tournament teams, BYU beat and well played and beat a lot of very good teams. Uh, very few teams challenged themselves out of league like BYU did this year. That was one of their strong, you know, one of the strong suits on their resume this year was what they want, what they did out of league that the committee asks you to do out of league. You know, and there, there were some things in which BYU fell short in conference play, but out of league, they, they did so much of what you want to do. And when you win 24 of 35 and use 10 different starting lineups to do it and lose your inside plan from the get-go, uh, you know, absolutely credit and kudos and plaudits uh, to get BYU to where it got, you know, one win away from getting to the NIT Final Four. And when you get to the NIT, look at the teams BYU played and the teams that are in the tournament now. That's a good field. BYU played good teams early, played good teams late, and 24 wins, I think, are, are to be applauded. I do wonder sometimes if the final 46 seconds at Santa Clara had played oh, out differently, yep. would the end of the season have played out differently? You know, that was such a, such a weird and key moment of the season where that weekend kind of became a lost weekend for BYU. And then the two losses that followed it, that you might actually, you know, those aren't bad losses on the back end, the USF home and Gonzaga home. Those happen. But that weekend prior, if that had just turned out, and maybe just that last minute turned out differently, might have things turned out differently in the end, we'll never know. But um, it was such a strange thing to occur to a program that had never lost back-to-back -back regular season games under Coach Pope to suddenly losing four in a row that kind of took BYU off balance, you know, kind of staggered them. But, you know, they got off the mat, right? And, and what they did late put themselves back in a position to be on the bubble and keep themselves into the mix uh, to the very end. It is such a hard tournament to make. It is such a hard tournament to qualify for. And yet, BYU's always right there. You know, dip years are few and far between. And, and when your quote-unquote, you know, dip year is, you know, you know, 20 plus wins and playing in the NIT, <laughs> you're a pretty dang good program. And, and it really can't, you know, it's, it wasn't even that much of a dip. You know, it was just a weird spot in the season where they had a bit of a rut, climbed out of it, just not all the way. As we see sometimes through adversity, there can be positive things that come out of it. And obviously the adversity is losing your bigs early in the season. The positive thing came out of it is we discovered how good Foose is. What type of role do you want to see for him next year, knowing that they're going to add some size around him? Yeah, if he can just more and just add additional components to his game, uh, the next thing might be, you know, facing and, 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 and putting it on the floor a little bit. Um, you know, Yoli Childs is a great comp. You know, he was in the, he was in the building last night. He saw Foose break his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, his freshman rebounding record. Uh, and and, and what, a, what a great comp to have and to have others use as an illustration uh, to have that kind of impact is, is maybe reasonable to expect right now. Uh, and, and yet, you know, he, he is such a wide body and yet so smooth and kind of silky in the way he moves. Uh, I couldn't be more excited than to watch his development as a foundational piece for BYU into the Big 12. You know, you talk about, well, who on the roster looks like a quote unquote Big 12 guy. That's a Big 12 guy. All right, Foose is a Big 12 guy, and, and they've got him early, and, and so much was shown as a true freshman. And he was dropped into the deep end yes. after that UVU game, essentially, right? You know, the, the progression might have been a little more slow and gradual and yet similarly encouraging, but um, it, was, it was the baptism by fire, and he came through it with flying colors, and uh, how exciting uh, to have him as, again, a foundational piece for this program moving forward.
Greg Rebell on BYU Sports Nation. As we push forward to next year and look at what Mark Pope is dealing with uh, in terms of compiling a roster, we've talked about BYU's need to add some size, like s- some guys or a- mm-hmm. at least one guy over the you know, height of six feet, eight inches, six, nine. And then they clearly need uh, a point guard. Got to find a point, John yeah. Lucas right. and Alex Barcelo. So what do you expect the roster turnover to be like, and, and where does Mark Pope go from here? Well, where Mark Pope always goes, which is everywhere. Uh, it, that's the one great thing about uh, the one fun thing about watching him coach and 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 create uh, rosters year to year is where he goes and how he finds and what he brings in and the portal changes everything for everyone. But you know, Mark Pope is already on the job; like he is finding next year's team now. Um, it's happening immediately, and and uh, you know, I, I think coaches want to play for him for a lot of good reasons. Uh, the fact that you can put almost you know twelve thousand fans in the building uh, for an NIT quarterfinal is one of them. Uh, there are a lot of things BYU has going for it right now. Love the staff. Uh, you know, we always want the staff to progress, meaning guys get better jobs. But selfishly, I want this group to stay together for a while because I just love how they work together uh, under Coach Pope. And, and, yes, we want all those guys to get their chances. They've earned them. They deserve them. But, man, it's, it's a great group. And I'd love to see them, you know, stay together. As long as they're happy to be together, uh, I, I'd love that to happen. But that's, that's the, the, the neat thing is he can go and kind of create a new look um, uh, for next season and beyond. But I think BY, and this is just me thinking, but um, you're probably looking to buy more than rent right now. Uh, I, I don't know that, that one-year guys help you a ton. Uh, you still want to win a WCC championship and, and, and a push toward that would be great. But I think you're looking more for, you know, guys with a little more longevity, the two- and three-year, if not the true freshman who can be with you four or five. But I, I, don't, I don't know that one-year guys are going to help a ton or as much as maybe they might have otherwise, whereas more two- and three-year guys that can be, again, foundational pieces for that transition into the Big 12. I don't know if Mark Pope's thinking this way, but maybe when he goes out and he looks at guys, he's thinking, well, this is a, a guy that in two years I can be leaning on to help us win games in a very, very tough league they're going into. I wish we weren't doing it today and recapping BYU's basketball season, but this is the reality that we are dealing with. And uh, as I told you, Greg, you're the perfect man to help us kind of process through everything that happened over those 35 games. Well, we've all had a good look one way or the other at what transpired over these last <laughs> 35 games, and I think we can all appreciate all the hard work that went into getting 24 wins. Certainly. And, uh, and, and man alive, uh, I, I love the atmosphere last night. Uh, it, it's invigorating that you can, uh, you know, have disappointment uh, you know, for a short span, be kind of erased by the, uh, the the excitement that comes with a new tournament run and a new feel and a new vibe. And uh, and getting to the quarterfinals is an achievement, and I think it should be applauded. And we know that uh, the objectives will always be to get to the NCAA yep. tournament, which BYU does more often than not over the last quarter century, right? And, and so, uh, you know, onward with that pursuit. And pursuit of a WCC championship, too. One last crack. One more, one one more, more one last chance. Crack at trying to contend for that league title next year. And then uh, during this next year, you know, you're already going to be, you know, kind of one foot in one league and one foot in the next because all those things are going to start coming out in terms of, uh, you know, schedules being released and broadcast plans and all the things that go into the transition. And that'll be exciting, too. Yes, it is exciting. Greg, thanks for the time. Always a pleasure. Coming up, Max Hall tells us why he's lacing him up one more time at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. And the Sweet 16 in the big dance begins tonight. Are we all Gonzaga fans at this point? Nope. Looking at you, Jason. Nope. This is BYU Sports Nation. On the basic level, we offer transportation. We carry four wheels, tailgates, and a place to rest your rump. Beyond that, we provide adventures, opportunities, and jobs well done. So perhaps our favorite offering is our full line of trucks, including the new Nissan Titan. Right off I-15, Tim Dally Nissan Southtown and the popular full-size Nissan Titan. Think Nissan. Think Tim Dally. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. 
Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrum.com. Turn TV time into together time with the BYU TV app. Watch all your favorite shows when, where, and how you want. This isn't like a practical joke, is it? No, sir. Immerse yourself in stories with all the feels. Go on uninterrupted journeys of discovery and see families coming together while watching with your own. See new and original content all for free on the BYU TV app. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. BYU baseball hosting Gonzaga this weekend for a big three-game series. First game tonight, 8 Eastern on the BYU TV app or also available locally on BYU Radio 107.9 FM as well as the app. He is Jason. I am Spencer. This is BYU Sports Nation to interact with the show at any time you like. Follow us on all the major social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. You know what time it is. Let's whip it. The Cougar Whip Around presented by Maris, your integrated container logistics company, enabling growing trade, or global trade rather, for a growing world. Tyler Algier is 57th on the Cam Miller Pro Football Network Top 300 Draft Board. Okay. Will this translate into Algier being a third round draft pick? No, there's no guarantee that just because you're 57 on one guy's big board that all of a sudden you're going to be a day two guy and you're going to get taken. In but it tells round. us what we want to hear, so we need to give it more credence. Well, how many <laughs> running backs are needed by these teams in the first three yes. rounds is what it ultimately is going to come down to. And where does Tyler Algier rank on the running backs list is what I'm looking at more of than just the overall big board. So I still think Tyler is a fourth round pick right now. But maybe he does something in his pro day workouts. Um, I don't know uh, if he's going to run the 40 or not. We'll see tomorrow right. during our pro day coverage. But if he can raise the stock, maybe he sneaks back into the third round. He just feels like a fourth round pick to me. See, third round is where I'm going to start paying attention. I expect him to go third, fourth, fifth in, in that area. So those middle rounds. So third is where I'm going to start really paying attention to where he goes. You know what we need to hope for? A bunch of running backs to get drafted early. Yep. Honestly. All right, on to the second, Jason. What are you more interested in tonight? Or I should say, who are you more interested in tonight as you look at the Sweet 16? At least eight of those teams. Is it the Zags or everybody else for you? Do I even need to say this? I am a huge Razorback fan tonight. <laughs> um, it's the field. Down go the Zags. That's all I hope for. Really? Oh, yeah. What? Why do I need to root for the Zags? I do not understand the Zag love by so many BYU fans. I don't get it. I just don't. <laughs> will you cheer for fellow Big 12 teams when BYU's well, in the course. Big 12? Of course Why I will. Why not the Zags as a fellow WCC team then? Look, my rationale does not have to make a bit of sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are you more interested in? Oh, you, Zags or the field? I'm rooting for the Zags. Right, we can't be friends. <laughs> okay, what are you more interested in tonight? The U.S. Men's National Team or the Sweet 16? Um, man, the repercussions potentially for the U.S. Men's National Soccer Team and their World Cup qualification are huge. That's a bigger game, but I'm more interested in the Sweet 16 because it's the here and now. All right, I'm going to go with uh, option three, BYU baseball, <laughs> because I'll be on the air in the dugout. Against the nationally ranked Gonzaga uh, Against team. Gonzaga. That's why you're, that's, you're taking this animosity for the Zags within baseball and extending it It follows through all sports, okay? Okay. Sweet 16 in the moment. The biggest game really is, if you're a World Cup guy, U.S. men's national team. Ryan Hancock, former BYU quarterback, tweeted out the following yesterday with this picture included saying sometimes golf tournament swag just doesn't hit the mark. Today's Kalani Satake Classic knocked it out of the park with this beauty. It's a straw hat with a royal blue stretch Y on it. Kalani knows how to hook up his peeps, says Ryan. Would you rock the Satake straw hat on the golf course, Jason? Uh, no, but that's because I don't golf. I would wear this, though. This is would be one heck 
of a uh, of a uh, lawn mowing hat. Okay. This is what I. This would be amazing. This is your. I would wear this to to mow my lawn. That would be perfect shade to mow. The lawn. I can see it right now, Jason. You're in your New Balance sneakers. Your dark socks pulled up to your knees. Uh, <laughs> dark socks, <laughs> but sandals. Your khaki golf shorts. <laughs> Okay, an oversized <laughs> polo and that straw hat. No, I, that's Jason. I want that to, to mow my lawn in. That would be amazing to keep the sun out of your face <laughs> mowing the lawn. I would love that hat. I All just right. want the hat. Yeah. I'll wear it wherever. All right, everybody's favorite BYU Uber driver, Jack DeMooney, tweeted this out yesterday. He says, on my way to pick up Coach Andy Reid in Salt Lake City tonight for our BYU Football High School Coaches Clinic tomorrow morning. It's going to be nerve-wracking because I'm a Buffalo Bills fan, and I don't want to bring up that game with 13 seconds. I'm sure Andy would love to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, what should we talk about? Any ideas? Mm. Uh, so the question is, what would you talk to Andy Reid about? Well, I wouldn't bring up Tyreek Hill. I can promise you that. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to him about BYU football. Stick to the roots because you and I have had multiple interactions with Andy Reid. Yes. And he has reiterated to us personally how much he, he loves it. Loves he loves BYU. BYU and BYU football. I would immediately turn into Chris Farley in this skit where he interviews like, you know, like Paul McCartney. Hey, uh, you remember when you were in the Beatles? <laughs> like, I would be like, hey, remember when we won the Super Bowl? That was awesome. Hey, remember when we beat the Bills in the greatest the football game mode. of all time? I, I would mode. be totally that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, coming up, once a Coug, always a Coug in today's yep. Rise and Shoutout. And former BYU and NFL quarterback Max Hall will join us next to preview an epic alumni game. Is he recruiting for his team? This is BYU Sports News. Accidents don't just happen 9 to 5. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried & Jensen is here for you 24-7. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always and get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24-7. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Welcome to a partnership where customer experience comes first. It's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again, and you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. On the next relative race, oh! Kareem steps into Rochelle's shoes. We've come together for a reason. Layton's discovery becomes a healing moment for her relative. What can I do? How can I help you? And Tiffany receives bittersweet news. You make up for that in more ways than you will ever know. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It's a softball doubleheader tomorrow as the Cougars host Iowa State at Miller Park. You can watch both games beginning at 6 Eastern tomorrow on the BYU TV app. I'm excited. I'm going to join you on the broadcast. Big 12 preview. Let's go. Let's do this. These are big games. Huge week for BYU softball and building their NCAA tournament resume. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B. I'm Spencer Linton. To my left sits Jason Shepard. And, yes, we'll be hanging out in softball tomorrow. But right now... It's about previewing the BYU football alumni game and doing so with one of the heralded quarterbacks in BYU football history. Max Hall joins us over Zoom. Max, great to have you back on the program. What's up, guys? Hey, Good I, to be on, man. Good I to want see to you. I want to point out something. Okay, so my 10-year-old has been reading a book called The Greatest BYU Quarterbacks in History, and he just read your section, and in his words, he said, I quote, Max Hall was insanely good 
And I was like, yes, I appreciate that you say that about Max Hall. So, uh, Max, how does it feel to be dubbed one of the insanely good BYU quarterbacks in the history of this program? Listen, he just became one of my favorite kids right there. So I'm all about him. That means, that means a lot, man. It just it, it means a lot to be considered in that category because there's obviously been a lot of great BYU quarterbacks, and it feels good to be the best one, you know? It feels good to be number one. Thank you. What is that fraternity like? Because BYU is known for quarterbacks, Max. You're part of that in, in one of the greats. What, what does that – being a part of that fraternity mean to you? Uh, it, it means a lot. Like it's 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 a special group. It, it's fun being able to see those guys and hang out with them and tell stories and all that. But I mean, obviously, quarterback you and all the great quarterbacks. I've gotten to meet a bunch of them, so I get to work with Ty now, and we banter back and forth about stuff. But it, it's it's when you look back at it and really think about it, uh, it's I'm very blessed to have had the opportunity to play and be considered one of the one of the greats or, or whatever you want to say. So it's a blessing. Max, as one of the greats, you're returning to play in the BYU football alumni game set for March 31st. When you were presented with this opportunity, why did you jump at it? I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Jack, Jack, Jack DeMooney called me up. He's like, Max, come play in the alumni game. I said, absolutely not. I want people to remember me when I was good, not now. <laughs> that afternoon, Max Hall's playing in the alumni game. Here we go. So, <laughs> I mean, I, at that point, I'm in, right? And so, you know, now I'm thinking, hey, you know, I've seen some clips before. We'll be in the IPF, you know, little game, and then we'll have the spring game that afternoon, right? Next thing I know, they're doing a little practice, and the feature thing is this alumni game. So now I'm in. Like, I, I am all in. I called John Beck the other day. I said, drop everything you're doing. Come to AZ. I need you to train me for the next two weeks. I got to get ready for this game. So it was kind of funny, man. But no, this is going to be fantastic. And I appreciate the opportunity. But um, it's going to be fun to see a bunch of old teammates and a bunch of old players there at the game and get to hang out and have a good time and uh, ham it up a little bit. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, Max. If I set the over under at three on hamstring pulls, are you taking the over or the under? Uh, just, come on, that's an easy bet. We're taking the over. <laughs> taking the over on that. You know, that's one of the first thing I said. I was like, what, what's the deal? Like, are, are they going to be able to, to rush me? Because if I'm having to, like, dodge rushes, though, I may not make it the whole game. We might need a backup. I need Brendan Gaskins on the team, man, because I'm, I'm going to need a sub. So, um, I, I, I don't know. I hope everybody stays healthy. I hope it'll be competitive, but at the same time, let's uh, <laughs> let's not be hurting guys out there. Well, look, for anybody that's seen you recently, they know that you're in pretty good shape, to say the very least. I, I, I don't think you're going to have to worry too much about that. Hey, so I started throwing. I had to start throwing in, like, all my quarterback trainings and sessions that we're doing. I had to start jumping in and throwing a little bit, and – I still got it. You know, I mean, it, it's still there. So, I mean, uh, it, it'll be fun. Are you telling your high school kids that you coach to watch this game live on the BYU TV app, or are you trying to keep them oh, oh, away from this? Oh, they're all over it. Uh, in fact, some of them are actually going up to watch the game. Like, they're, they're all over it. Like, Coach, you better ball out. You better not lose. You know, they're giving me giving me crap. But, uh, yeah, they've, uh, they helped me. You know, when we, when we posted that committed thing, I was like, guys, I got to make this look like I'm, you know, I, after a great conversation with coach Sataki, I'm committing, you know, do the whole thing that I always make fun of when they post these things, but um, they're, they're involved in it, man. And it actually, it's been surprising how many people have come up to me in Arizona saying, Hey, we're going up for the alumni game. Can't wait to see. So I'm like, this might be a lot of people there. I'm hearing that it might be on TV. And I'm like, I can't, I can't look like a chump. So I'll be ready to roll. I'll be ready to go. Well, we can confirm that it's going to be on television. It is on TV. We're, we're putting it on TV, Max. We found oh, out you were in. This is on BYU TV. We're putting this thing on TV, brother. It, that's going to happen. Oh, boy. So are you, are you bringing Dennis up? Is Dennis coming? Is like Ty, is Ty coming up? What's are, are you bringing any, uh, any tag alongs? I tried to, man. So Ty's like. Ty's like, yeah, once I found out you're playing, I'm not playing. You take it way too serious. Bro. And I'm like, <laughs> whatever, man, get up and play. But And then, you know, Dennis, I, I think Dennis actually really wants to play, but with his hip injury, it's just not smart for him to play. Um, so I'm still trying to get him to come up. I was like, hey, come be the coach, man. 
I, I need somebody to call plays for me. Come be the coach. But I don't know if he's going to make it or not. Ask Dennis if he would reconsider if we allowed him to tackle Jerem. <laughs> See if that would be a game changer. <laughs> I think that I think that seals the deal. Yes. I think if Dennis gets a free shot at Jerem, I think he gets up. <laughs> the question is, is Jerem man enough to take that hit? That's the question. Uh, we're clipping this off right now, and we are tagging Jerem in all of his social media accounts to see how he responds to this. Max Hall is with us on BYU Sports Nation. In all seriousness, we cannot wait for the alumni game. We think it's going to be a fantastic turnout for fans and a very exciting event. You're going to compete against Kevin Federick, another really good BYU quarterback on the other side but with that in mind let's turn the page to the actual BYU football team and I want to rewind to the moment you're with your son and you're running out the flag for BYU and that epic weekend where the Cougars are officially invited into the Big 12 they beat Utah and then put together just a remarkable season overall Max what was that moment like for you and then to watch BYU compete the way that they did for the remainder of the season after the win against Utah Special moment, special moment, you know, ha having my family there and, and being able to run out of the tunnel and, and have Rex there with me and him getting to see and feel what it's like to run out and be in front of 64,000 people and hear the crowd cheer and then get to watch BYU play and get to be down on the sideline a little bit. Um, really special for me and him, but then to watch the Cougars rise to the occasion and beat the youth finally um, hopefully now I'm not a curse to the, the program anymore because, uh, I mean, that was driving me crazy. But here's what was really cool about it, guys. I haven't been back to BYU. I haven't been back to that stadium in a long time. And, you know, with my past and the mistakes I've made and having to overcome my, my addiction and, and, and get back to where I am today, BYU fans, Utah fans, everybody was so receptive. And it was really cool to see how many people came up and wanted to talk and just be back in that environment and see old teammates and coaches and special, special weekend for us, man. I'll never forget it. Fantastic stuff. Max, let's finish with this. What are your expectations for another Hall, Jaron Hall, as he approaches his next season? High expectations, man. I mean, if I'm Jaron Hall, I have the mindset I'm going to win the, win the Big 12. I mean, is there any other way to do it? Like, that, that's got to be the mindset. And I think this is a big year for him. There's a lot of expectations. Number one thing is the kid has to figure out a way to stay healthy. He's got to have a good off season. He's got to get his body prepared. He's got to play smart. And um, I think if he does that, we could have a very, very good season. I'm looking forward to watching. I think a lot of people are excited about the new what's coming up next for BYU and the Big 12 and the team that we have. I think it's going to be an exciting year. Max, you clearly still do have it, not just off the field, but on the field uh, in both their arenas, man. Thanks for the time. It's great to catch up with you, and we look forward to seeing you in the alumni game. Yeah, it's going to be a blast. Thanks for having me on, guys. We'll see you next week. You got Thanks, it. Max. BYU football great. Insanely good. Yes. Max Hall. All right, coming up, Cougar for life. And it's not about how you start. It's all about how you finish, especially when we're discussing double down picks. <laughs> This is BYU Sports Nation. I watch uh, BYU TV because it has good programming uh, for all family members, and aligns to my values. BYU TV really does help me with my parenting. It helps me show my kids good examples of the way that we should live. No matter what you watch or listen, you always live uh, feeling better. All of us together.
My name is Sylvester Caldmer III, and I love baseball. I wasn't very good at it. What's the point of playing if I can't help the team win? But then something happened that changed everything. Who are you? Just a friend who's played a little ball. Babe Ruth is coaching me. I know you're a fraud and a cheater. The magic is gone, and I don't have it anymore. I appreciate everything you've done for me, but maybe it'd be better if you undid it. Kid, that was you knocking the ball out of the park. The thing I did was help you to believe in yourself. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. A reminder, we're always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. Or download the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. And while you're there, please subscribe, rate, and review the show. For the first time in a very long time, I'm actually excited to recap our double down picks. You must have done well. Yeah. How about that? BYU basketball, not so much last night as a team, but I did correctly call both of my picks, including this. Jerem Jordan's NIT Final Four will not be perfect. He was two for four going into last night. He lost both of the games yesterday because I'm leaning heavily. So Texas a and beat Wake Forest. That happened. BYU lost two, so his Final Four is not perfect. Number two, I can't believe I got this one. BYU will out-rebound Washington State. That happened. They did. 40 to 39. I thought that was how BYU was going to win the game. Turns out they just didn't make threes and Washington State did. But two for two, total of three points. All right. Uh, so Jerem's picks. Yeah, this let's was... recap those too, Jason. Okay, so for Jerem, he says uh, BYU will have more offensive boards than Wazoo. Nope. Uh, Wazoo had one more offensive board, 13 to 12, so they had that advantage. Uh, Jerem then went 0 for 2 with his picks by saying BYU shoots a higher two-point field goal percentage in the game. Wazoo outshot the Cougars in blue, 44 to 41. So while you get two points, you get, you go two for two, Jerem. He goes over for, for two. It's not how you start, Jason. It's how you finish. Unfortunately, and realistically, <laughs> I would give up my correct picks if it meant BYU advancing to the NIT Final Four. Come on. Ah, that's just the type of guy you are. Well, but since they did lose, you're not going to give up the opportunity to no, close the gap on Jeremy. Absolutely though, right? I not. Didn't think so. so in my mind, it ends three nothing. That's a win for me. Give me the belt right now. <laughs> Our question of the day. How will you remember this BYU basketball season? Sum it up. Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from at t.coley1 on Instagram. They say, very successful and making the most of some unfortunate hurdles early in the season. But what I need to know is Spencer's Pinewood Derby results. Oh, yes. How did it go? Second place out of 40 cars. Second place. Second place out of 40 cars. For my son, Jack. Did it have a name? I know you said lime green was the color. Did did it have a name? Uh, Grumpy Bob was the name of the car. Okay. He, gr he drew a grumpy stick figure on the car. Grumpy Bob. Grumpy Bob had some second. road rage and was speeding through there on the aluminum track. Of the we may have also Derby. just given the show a name, too. <laughs> grumpy Bob. <laughs> I someone asked. That's fun, yeah. That's cool. All right, today's rise and shout out. We should give it to Yoli Childs, Jason. Yeah, in attendance last night, uh, Foose passing his freshman rebounding record. He was there with his wife and daughter. Always great to see Yoli. What a cute baby. Beautiful family. Yoli's crushing it with the uh, stars in the G League. Our thanks to today's guest, Greg Rebell and Max Hall. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always use hashtag BYUSN. Always our rise and shout out presented by Mountain America, official credit union of BYU Athletics. For Jason, I'm Spencer. Shout out to Chris Hale. Go Cougs.